What's good, Mousy fam? It's your boy Mousy coming back at you with some more Mousy cast action. We are back into casting. Karavitz has concluded. It was a banger of a tournament. Be sure to check it out if you haven't. I'm not going to spoil you the results. Go, don't be lazy. Watch those games. It was an epic tournament. It had everything from upsets to expected results. Basically everything. It has cheese, long drawn out macro games, beautiful builds, new stuff, everything that you want to actually uh think about but we are back with our regular stuff which is going to be casting some lower mmr action and today i have a replay that has been submitted by one of my my followers on twitch who actually followed me and said hey i have a replay where can i submit it and i was like buddy join the discord and be sure to drop it in the correct channel and yeah that's how i ended up with a nation league tournament uh, replay and this is between Germany and Korea. Not to be confused with Nation Wars. This is a lower MMR version of it. But it's as epic as the, the, the actual Nation Wars. Now, spawning at the top left side, representing Germany. It is going to be our blue Zerg player. If you know him from Fencom Cup, it might be familiar if you played those tournaments. It is Fenrak, also a streamer. And his opponent... A bit of an interesting combination of names. Our red turn for Korea. It is Beyond Maru Klem. Whose name we're going to shorten. And hopefully we're not going to be offensive towards him. Uh, we're going to shorten shorten the name to BMC for simplicity. And we're kind of deep into it. Like a um, couple minutes already. Uh, literally a couple, like two. And we have link speed on the way. We have a full pull out of gas. This was an earlier spawning pool uh, or later hatch. I'm not sure which one it is, but that's going to mean that we're going to have some aggression. We have four links already coming up. Single queen uh, speed is on the way. Second hatcher will finish up. Bit of a supply block on Fenrak's side. Links are moving across the map. Uh, not sure what this build is actually. Reaper is staying at home. Probably just saw the, the timing of that hatchery and was like, no, that doesn't seem right. We have another marine coming up and we have a reactor and a factory. Now, I'm curious if we're going to see any kind of uh, 3cc action, for example, uh, like the, the command center before the starport. Oh, there we go. Okay, so they kind of follow this... Uh, uh, they kind of follow the meta, I guess, for, for standard gameplay. Obviously, what Fenrag does is nothing standard about it. And we have another two pair of links. That's going to be um, uh, quite crucial for Fenrag, as it would be two extra drones. Second queen is on the way. Actually, no, sorry, that's a, that's a third queen. Okay quite nice and we have a third uh third hatchery so seemingly if you didn't see the early game you would say like ah, oh, yeah this sounds about right this looks about right uh third hatchery is going to finish probably it was like a 230 hatchery something along those lines yeah um but it was not quite the case like speed is uh is a tad bit faster so we had everything a tad bit faster that is important to note and a couple of links already go down and Fenrak is back into droning, so this is not going to be anything committal. This is just to keep the turn honest and just uh, not let him uh, basically cut any corners. Two Hellions, the Reaper, and two Marines have to stay at home. We have a third Hellion, which probably should have been four, right? Like, okay, we, we're going to have Hellions uh, four and five, which is quite interesting to say. Usually you would say five and six, three and four, five and six, um, or seven and eight. If uh, the turn is crazy, more than that is considered uh, either trolling or, or battle mech. Obviously, a blue flame like Hellbat push is not uh, out of the out of the equation either. And we don't see a lair, but we see a Roachhorn coming up for for Fenrak. And he is mining gas, and we have two extra gases, so I suppose this is going to be an interesting. I don't see a bailing nest. No bailing nest so far. I haven't seen one and I just checked that there isn't. There's nine roaches. Now, that's a bit of gas there. Um, there's more links coming up as well. So, I'm quite curious how this is going to pan out. Now, obviously the banking of this gas, like three gases, 
could suggest Roach Ravager, not just Roaches in, uh, in total. Otherwise, two gases would be enough, most likely, to, to play that. Uh, I would have said even Lin Bane Ravager, honestly. Maybe that would be played on four gases. Um, this early on. Usually you don't see this early on, because usually the Zerg wants you to go up to, like, um, 60, 66, and then decide if he wants to join up or just all in or something like that. Usually even, like, 72, 75. Um, those are kind of, like, dark numbers where he all ins. Uh, but probably the, the standard is, like, you can rush up to, like, 80 workers, 85, 80, even 90, and then just go from there. Uh, if you play Ling Bane, of course. Then you can just like play roaches as well, and then you can just they, they keep you alive enough to rush up to hive and That's very very important because hive tech is, is where the zerg thrives. You can have vipers you can have uh, Cracklings you can have a lot of stuff and there we go. Here's the, the link ravager actually This is quite interesting to, to say it out loud uh, Link ravager is obviously not something that you want and there's a double engineering being the wall which are researching the plus one plus one Oh, one of the benches is going down and that's going to cost uh bmc a lot let's see the links that blood tank is actually putting in a lot of work but now the links can actually go in and now the scvs are in danger six scvs have gone down potentially even some some friendly fire from that tank oh that's going to play a massive factor the tank cannot decide where to shoot Oh, there we go. Finally, the tank goes down. 17 SCVs went down, and there's one more Roach, one more Ravager. A couple more links will show up, and there's 40 more links coming up. Another Ravager will morph, and oh, looks like there was a wall off in time. Now we have a bit of an issue. There's an SCV uh, squad and new squad blocking this whole uh, entrance. And the Hellions are somewhat protected and, uh, you know, shooting in a line is going to be much, much more comfortable. As the lift, the natural once again, 22 SCVs in total went down, 23. And there's two Banshees, three Hellions. By the way, there was a bit of a tank shot, uh, friendly fire. <laughs> One of the SCVs just died from uh, the tank shot, as it looks like it. And this is kind of game over, right? Oh, never mind. No, it's not game over. Okay, let me, uh, hear me out on this one. Uh, though I don't like the reactor play on those two extra axes, I'd say this is still fine uh, because the turn has 3 CC. Now, Lair is just now starting, which will delay a lot of the tech. Bailing Nest is on the way, but that's not going to be bailing, uh, bailing with speed if that finishes. Um, no evil chambers so far, so upgrades are uh, not going to be here in the near future. Those are like... Um, very distant uh, ideas. So I have a Banshee, which is going to help us defend as the Terran, uh, 100%. And there's, uh, yeah, uh, the problem is that the Zerg is now joining. It's going to go up to, to 69 workers. Nice. And we have, oh, we don't have a fourth. Okay, so that is quite a bit of a mistake at eight minutes for Fenrak. Um, I'm pretty sure it could have squeezed in a fourth base. We see that the drone is here, so the intention was there, and I was going to take the fourth base. Obviously, when the Terran is on two bases, uh, well, three technically, because... Enemy assaulting uh -oh. drones. Okay, uh, Fenrak doesn't know about this. Oh, then the Banshee with the cloak will be quite, uh, quite annoying. We haven't even talked about this, but yeah, there was a, there was a scout by the Overlord, um, and it did not Mineral scout the, the tech lab, so that's quite important. Okay, uh, Stim is just on the way, combat shield not yet. Honestly, uh, I don't know. I think the add-ons could have been uh, made in a bit better way. Like, uh, just th those two barracks that actually got built in the back. They could have swapped the, the add-ons with the tech lab on the starboard, respectively the factory and just going to mines um like play a couple of mines that i think at the lower lower levels uh mines are great i know clem is a very big fan of mines uh i'm not sure about beyond or maru but i'm pretty sure they can play it as well Clem is probably the biggest mine advocate uh out of the professional terrans he always plays mines in tbc for uh even when people are like ah oh, no mines are not that great and whatnot um personally i think 
as a Zerg player, the mines are really, really annoying because you need to be aware of it and, and you need to pay attention on the minimap constantly, which I'm pretty sure in terms of multitasking, a lot of uh, lower MMR players, a lot of us mortals don't actually have uh, the mental fortitude to do. Bit of a supply block here on the side of BMC. Fenrak is at 130 supply and just uh, growing that supply cap. Oh my lord. <laughs> 40 mutas on the way. Let's go. Uh, I forgot to point out the spire though, which is obviously quite a big, uh, quite a difference uh, in terms of what I was expecting. I was expecting somewhat of a rush up to hive or something. Uh, looks like it's not going to be the case. So we are uh, in 10, 10 and a half minutes in and we're still on lair. That is obviously not the most comfortable of uh, situations, but we have mutas. We have a lot of mutas on the way, so we have 40 mutas. 40 mutas should be able to deal a lot of damage and, and significant damage obviously now this marine clump there's 54 marines over here and three tanks now marauders have been added to the mix which are going to make uh, tanking a bit easier or make the life of the turn easier a bit and fenrak is just removing this uh this set of rocks which will open up the the engage position a tad bit obviously this side is not yet that important where's the third command center okay third command center finally lands and we're back into the macro game, I suppose. But uh, honestly, Fenrak should not let the Terran just go back into the macro game. And that is going to be the Mutas just engaging. One Hellion goes down. Beautifully done. And now the Lynx are actually going in. I believe the Bailings can just go into the middle. And oh no, he turns back with the Bailings and a couple of Lynx. I'm not sure if that was a good play. Oh, and now Fenrak is actually trying to just... Oh, he tried to go into the middle line last second. But he's not going to manage to do so. But in the meantime, mutas are actually just popping in. Probably Svetrak has not scouted in, in like forever. Now, this is the that single overlord, I think. And this overlord just uh, scouts just a tad bit at the edge. Okay, so you have overload speed. I'm not sure why we are not using it. Um, that is obviously a mistake. Plus one carapace and, miss, uh, and melee will finish. And now the Terran is actually moving across the army. Could catch these buildings morphing. Oh, but the command center is actually really, really open. There's no turrets. There's no turrets. There's not even engineering base, I believe. There's no engineering base. And now Fenrak is actually just uh, destroying everything over here. He could lose the command center. That is going to be huge. There's no new command center building. Obviously, there's no money. A couple of beings are morphing. And there we have four tanks on the low ground just sieging up and just trying to make... Uh, the most pressure out of everything. That's another base going down, and honestly, this is the last one, and Fenrak knows that. And if this goes down, BMC has nothing left to build. Oh, and his supply block as well, so that's going to be really, really painful. The command center is going down. Oh, that means there's, there's no way the turn just rebuilds anything of this, so this is all the army that you have here. Unless there's like, oh, there's like two marauders and that's it, probably, yeah. I, I guess. Uh oh, that that is uh, that is huge issues. He's gonna get revealed. Oh, the mutas, the mutas, no! Fenrak is actually just sacking the mutas. I'm not sure if this is the correct play here, but there's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff just blowing up all over the place, and it looks like BMC is actually committing to this base race. This base race could actually work out. There's a liberator, there's two tanks. And he should be careful not to lose these. Oh, the lair is exposed. The drones are exposed. A couple more drones will go down. And I'm not sure what to prioritize at this point. Maybe take down the tech. Maybe take down the buildings that actually produce units that will make your life a misery. Let's see what is going to be the play. There's a couple of buildings there. I believe he has to float them because there is a new attack on the map. Uh, sorry, not just on, not mutant tech on the map, but there's mutant tech potential. Oh, let's see the splits, the splits, the splits. And Fenrak just barely, barely not touching them. Oh my lord, that was actually sexy splits from our Korean player. That was beautiful splits right here out of BMC. Okay, now Fenrak is in a deep, deep trouble. He's trying to do something with the, the fresh mutas. Those six mutas could actually turn out to be very, very useful. We're gonna take down a couple of buildings, and I believe BMC has to go back at some point, right? Right? I mean, 
Pinblick committed of the base raid like this. Fenrak is gonna send a couple of links based on the minimap. I believe those are links and potentially bailings as well. And Burro is on the way. Oh my oh, oh that is actually huge. Okay, so if Burrow finishes, which is not actually a, a possibility, I'm not sure if this is gonna be the case here. Oh, he's not going for it, he's not going for the hatchery. He thinks it's a queen. He might think that this is a queen. And he needs to target down. If Burrow finishes, he cannot scan for it. Oh, and it finishes. Fenrak, that is a huge upgrade. That's a huge upgrade. That's a lot of gas. Get more for a lot of bailings. He has a gold base. He has a gold base over here. Wow, okay. So this is so far a banger. And just to draw a bit of air into my body. So, guys, if you also think this is a banger, be sure to hit that sub button just now. Just pause the video, hit that, smack that like button, and the units go down! No chance to breathe for Mousy. Okay, this turn is working. Working for this game. It's working very, very hard after that blunder, leaving everything in the open for the mutas to actually snipe. Benrak is also working his, his rear end off. He's trying to do something about this, but he's gonna lose another spawning pool, another bailing nest, another hatchery. It's going to be very, very important to, to get rid of. There's no Raven. There's no command centers, no missile turrets, no engineering bay to build missile turrets. So, Terran is just F? Like, I don't know. Honestly. Okay. Oh, we have a couple of barrel bailings. All right. I like that. A bit of an oversaturation here on that gold base. Just obviously not the biggest of issues. Um, honestly, at this point, you are happy that you have that gold base, so don't uh, complain about it. Okay, a couple of bailings will arrive to this gold base. I mean, this is going to be a crucial position to defend. Okay. A couple of bailings burrow. I like that. Okay, so this is quite an interesting and uh, very, very weird game, but I love it. So we have, uh oh, we have that spawning pool kind of burning down. <gasps> the spire is actually uh, not burning down, but like dying off of creep. Buildings cannot survive uh, without creep. It's like, you know, they're going to degrade over time without you touching them. So, yeah. The ground needs to touch it, and the ground in this case is the creep. So, we have a bit of an entrenched position here. The mute is trying to just poke in and poke, uh, poke constantly. But now, we have an interesting situation as this hit spot of, of full of Terran Marines and Marauders and three medevacs is going to try their best. Obviously, it's a bit of an issue that we cannot scan because these are like burrowed, burrowed drones. Those are not going to go down, and that is huge. There's a bit of a hit squad here with those marines. Oh, but he needs to be careful not to let the medevac be sniped. One more starport is actually moving in, and the Terran tries to survive. Oh, Bailings, Bailings, Bailings! Oh, I'm not sure if they are in range. I don't think they are. I mean, they might have the, the splash damage, but like, should not finish off these, uh, these terrors. My apologies. I had to like, yawn a bit. It's funny because the game is, is freaking exciting, but I just had to yawn because, you know, it sucks when you, you cannot sleep properly. It is what it is. The games are actually very, very solid, so I'm really, really happy about it. Alright, now... Yeah, I'm not even sure how you deal with this, honestly. Like, there's a couple of larvae on the map, and, and that's pretty much it. There's four extra larvae. Five. Oh! Oh no! He detonated the bailings! 
And there was some bailings here. He did not get that much uh, as it looks like it. Oh, I, I stepped away for a tad bit. And now this happens. Alaire is going to go down most likely. The Spire is going to go down. And he doesn't cancel it. That is a huge blunder. A couple of drones are being burrowed here. So there's nothing to be afraid of. These, these workers will not lose their lives. And there's 600 mils in the bank for Fenrak. Fenrak can actually rebuild that hatchery. Okay, one more hatchery is going to be finished in the top right side. We have one in the 3 o'clock position as well. Got a nice saturated. Yeah, this is a really, really scrappy game. The Terran is doing their best. BMC trying to, to work. Work their way back into this game. Very, very crucial, uh, crucial moments here. Okay. Do we have an SCP left? No SCP. There was an SCP, but I think it died. So there was a bit of repair chance here, if anything. This hatchery is going to go down. So I'm not even sure if this matters at this point. Because this hatchery is going to come back online. This hatchery is back online, or like online in general. There's 23 workers for Fenrak, and that means anything below, uh, like anything above um, your opponent in the current state could mean a lot. And that is exactly what's happening here, as 23 is obviously much, much larger than, uh, than no workers. Once again, the Terran is moving. It's moving across and trying to just protect this. Wait a second. <gasps> the barracks. This is the OG barracks. This is the OG barracks at 819 uh, 19 HP. That is, that is literally the very, very last barracks. It is revealed. There is nothing else on the map that could save it. Now... You can measure your army supply. You can measure your 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 size down there. You can do whatever you want, basically. If you lose all your buildings, the game is over. You can have a 200 out of 200 army while your opponent has one army supply or two, I guess. Could be one. Single zergling. If the single zergling just destroys the last building before you do, then the game is over. Okay, so this is this is another hatchery for Fenrak. These two queens, absolutely crucial to survive, I suppose. But I'm not sure how you're actually gonna gonna take them across the map and, and do stuff with them. These these queens are st stuck in no man's land. Um, problem is, it's it's a large map, and well, considering for the queens, it's large. Okay. Um, the queens are actually having a hard time just moving around, so that is quite important. So yeah, absolute banger. Um, once again, <laughs> I can only encourage you to hit that sub button if you like something like this, because it is really, really important. Okay, one Marauder and a Dream. That is going to come in for now. Okay, I believe you can hear the bell as well. So they're ringing the bell for <laughs> they're ringing the bell at the church. They're saying their prayers for the Terran player because this Terran player is in some deep trouble. He has no scans. He there is burrow bailings on the map. There is a bailing nest. There is an extra hatchery being added for larva, and yeah, it is mighty mighty tough. Uh, I'm not sure if they're <laughs> they have like I'm not sure about the the religion in Korea and stuff. So. I guess we can say like they're saying the prayers in Germany for for uh, for Fenrak to win this game and just uh, advance in the tournament. By the way, if I'm not mistaken, this is game number four between the two teams, so it is very very uh, crucial to win this one. This obviously could be at a um, two-one score. 
point. So one of the one of the teams is on match point. Oh, let's see the Burrow Bailings, the Burrow Bailings, the Burrow Bailings, the Burrow Bailings, the Burrow Bailings! Oh, they are Burrow! But they got, got some de uh, decent connections. I forgot to speak, but it's all, all good, I guess. The, there's Marauders and two Marines left over here. There's a couple more Marines over here for anti-air. Problem is the Spire. The Spire is actually finishing up soon. That is going to be really, really tough. Now the Zerglings are going to be super, super crucial. Uh, he needs to unburrow these Veilings, I believe. And just, you know, go for a, a two-sided attack or something. Just sandwich. Uh, get a, a bunch of your Lings with your Veilings on one side and, and get your, your Veilings unburrowed and just go from the other side and that's it. Obviously, this is interesting because um, there's a lot of things that Terran just doesn't know yet. Um, obviously, the Terran is being revealed for for eternity. It could just be the case that the Mutas just go for the, the barracks, honestly. Okay, the tank. Let's see. The, the tank is actually in danger. It needs to be very, very careful. All oh, the overlook is going to go down, but that's not going to matter too much. Where are those Mutas? Let's see the Muta flank. The Muta flank is commencing. BMC probably preparing for the very last fight. Ooh, that's one and a half meters going down. Oh, potentially maybe another one. Okay, another meter is going down. Oh, and, and Fenrak is actually losing a lot of meters. I oh, 39 meters lost. That's almost eight. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost 8,000 uh, resources just in mutas. 10 mutas are 1,000 uh, minerals, 1,000 gas, and let's see the splits. We need the splits. If the Marines go down, there's nothing left here. Oh no, let's see. Oh, the Marines! The Marines go down. No, BMC is dead. BMC fought valiantly but a bit of miss micro oh and the medevac is going to take down one more with two extra marauders three marauders left but there's nothing left versus the three upcoming mutas that is going to be it gg is going to be the call once the spire gets spotted or if the mutas get spotted and that is going to be very very painful for our korean player fought valiantly tried to come back after a disaster start and that is going to be gg when he saw the mutas and that's going to conclude this amazing game between team germany and team korea in nation league huge shout out to fedrak for submitting this and huge shout out to both players honestly they put on the show honestly smash that like button hit that sub ring the notification bell i'm gonna try to get these very long ass super scrappy cheesy games that if i if i can as well as the the beautiful macro games as well we always have some some decent starcraft here we have the past cheese series we have spectrum series spectrum heroes nowadays in combination with my my teammates from platinum heroes so yeah stay tuned for more mouse cast content as always i'll see you in the next one stay safe Peace, love, hugs, cheers.